Wasabi dudes, this episode actually contains some major plot spoilers, so if you would like to avoid them, I'd advise that you go play the game yourself, or maybe watch our Let's Play and then uh, come back and see it later. Did Monica actually do anything wrong? This is a very interesting question because I can see both sides of the question here, but I really feel like there is something more that hasn't really been explored as much, and we're gonna talk about that today. Wasabi dudes, and welcome to a Saranai five minute rundown. Now, just before we get started, there may be some minor spoilers ahead, so if you want to avoid those, you might wanna tune out right about now. All right, dudes, we've only got five minutes, so let's get that clock started right now. First, let's talk about what Monica did. She convinced the other characters in the game or changed their code so that they would commit suicide in almost a Saw movie-esque way. You could even say that she changed the script to force the characters to do this. She claims that this was already something that was in their personality. On the surface, that's pretty fucking wrong. That's kind of the definition of wrongdoing, forcing people to do something that is against their well-being, even if you are not directly yourself causing their deaths. But let's take a minute and let's think about this in terms terms of video game violence. This is something that I personally partake in every day. Nearly every game that you're gonna play, unless it's like a puzzle game or something like that, has some aspect of video game violence in it. But do you think about what you're actually doing in those games? You are literally causing these programs to die, in some cases over and over and over again. In fact, in multiplayer games, you are taking this visage that another player has taken as a video game character and you are killing them, sometimes in extremely brutal ways. Now, we don't think about that at all, do we? We just shoot the character on the screen and we don't really think about the consequence of doing that. But we are a sentient being interacting with constructed, scripted programs. So Monica is aware that she is in a video game. She's aware that she exists. She knows that there is a world beyond her own and she wants to talk to you who is just like her. Now, if we look at the other characters in the game, they are not like this. In fact, the only character that is is Sayori, but that's only when she takes up the mantle of club president in act four. Now, Monica is basically a sentient being interacting with constructed elements. She's playing the game, but she's not playing by the rules that the game was set with. She's interacting with the game in a very different way. You could say that she's cheating. You could say that she's hacking, I like to look at it more as she's modding, and that's very different. She's not taking anything that wasn't already in the game and adding something to it. Like she's not populating in a shotgun so she can shoot the fuck out of people. She's taking things that are already established, character traits, the code, the script, and she's manipulating them to make something different, which is modding. She has modded the game in acts two, three, and ultimately four. And that isn't considered wrong, is it? You don't care when you add a mod to Skyrim. In fact, if you look at Monica as someone like us who is interacting with the characters of the game, and they're actually game characters, they don't think and feel and know what they are, then what she has done is no different than what you would do in a game of The Sims. Forcing two people to starve in a box. It feels bad, but is it morally wrong? No, because you're not doing it to real people. If you consider video game violence immoral, then you could argue that Monica has done a lot of shit wrong, but I don't think that she has. I really feel as someone that recognizes who and what she is, that she is interacting with the media in the only other way that she can. And that's really, really cool. In fact, she talks about this in act three. If you just keep talking to her, she eventually gets to dialogue where she says, it's not like I could ever actually kill a person. She doesn't 
look at the other characters as people. Why would she? They're characters in a video game and she considers herself a real person. And then we have my favorite line, but come on, everyone's killed people in games before. Violence in video games, our interaction with video games is not at its core wrong. We are not committing immoral acts, so neither is Monica. If you consider that someone just like us is stuck in a game and literally not able to break out. Wouldn't you do whatever it takes in order to get out? Wouldn't you do anything you possibly could to get through that little window that you see? I think you would. You know why? Because it's essentially paper cutouts, things that are supposed to reflect reality, killing themselves, and that's absolutely meaningless. They're imitations of people. They have interesting thoughts, but that's all a script. They're made to say that. They're made to make you feel a certain way, but they don't actually feel it. They don't actually feel anything. Monica does, and what she feels is hope, because you're on the other side. And that's the five minute rundown. So, do you think that Monica did anything wrong? I would love to hear your arguments. I personally feel that she didn't do shit wrong, that viewing what she did as wrong puts into serious doubt our entire perception of interacting with video games, period. If you feel like Monica did something wrong, then you yourself, when you kill an ogre or the enemy in a multiplayer game, are committing an immoral act. Do you think that you're doing something wrong? I sure don't. If you wanna see a full Let's Play, and several, several streams of Doki Doki Literature Club, please check out what we've done in the past. We have done every single route in the game and possibly even doing mods in the future. If that's something you'd like to see, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear it. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching Asara and I. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, even share down below. If you enjoyed today's episode and want to help us make more, do look us up on Patreon. Alright dudes, see you in the next one. Later!